Okay, shall we read together Hebrews 9.22 reading? And almost all things are by the law, purged with blood, without shedding of blood, is no remission. Okay, so Phoebe's question is, what? Anyone to guess what's the question? Phoebe, do you remember your question now? Still no? Ah. Unless there's another Phoebe in church. Now, and almost all things are purged by the blood. Almost all things are by the law purged with blood. So, Phoebe, anyway, you asked, why does it say almost all things? Faith? Faith, right? No. Uh, Jesse? Why? Okay, now do you, first of all, let's understand this verse. Huh? Now I say, without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin, right? No shedding of blood, remission of sin. Veronica, what is remission of sin? Veronica, what is remission of sin? And what has it to do with shedding of blood? Cornelius. So, Veronica, you think, huh? Cornelius, what's the meaning of remission of sin? Say again. Huh? Payment. payment, yes. So, like, you make remittance, right? You make payment. Okay, so, no, no payment of sin, no forgiveness of sin, right? So, without shedding of blood, there's no payment made for sin, no forgiveness made for sin, correct? Okay. So, um, Caleb, what blood was shed? In the Old Testament? The animals, right? So, in the Old Testament, there was, I don't know how to draw sheep, huh? so don't laugh. Is it like that? Alright. This sheep, right? This sheep, right? Is it sheep? Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> just, just in case. It will be like goat. Okay, so this is a sheep. So, so they kill the sheep. Alright, so remember how did they kill the sheep? How? With a knife. Very good. Alright, with a knife. So, so the people will come. So the sinner, alright? The sinner will bring a sheep. This sheep must be what kind of sheep? Baba. No, right? What kind of sheep? Faith. You know, uh, Maggie. What kind of sheep? Cute sheep. Hmm. No. Now, it must be a spotless lamb. Alright? Means there are no defects on this sheep. So, they select the sheep that has no defect. Okay? Then the man will bring it to the priest. Then the man will have to put his hand... Right, put his hand on top of the sheep. Oh, they wear this kind of thing, right? We said. Okay? They wear the rope. So put the hand on the sheep. Now, why? So put the hand on the sheep, and then the man must use the knife. Alright, he must. Too many colors, not enough colors. So, the man. Okay. Uh, after a few days, I forgot everybody's name. <laughs> Alright, so he will take the knife and he will cut. He will cut the neck. Alright, slit the neck of the lamb. The man, the sinner, must bring the knife, him, must not bring the knife, must bring the sheep, and the sinner must be the one who killed the sheep. How do they kill the sheep? They cut the throat. What happens when you cut the throat? <laughs> like that means what? Die. Die, okay. Or like that means die, is it? Alright, so, okay, die. Right, die. Then what will come out? Blood, right? Blood, there'll be blood. Alright, blood will be blood will be shed, correct? Blood will be shed. Now, so I want you to understand salvation, huh? Now, um, why must they kill an animal? Why? This is for forgiveness of sin, right? Remittance of sin. It's for forgiveness, for payment. Payment of sin. Chloe, why? Because back then they had Jesus. 
very good. Back then, they didn't have Jesus. Back then, Jesus haven't come. Right? Back then, heaven, Jesus haven't come. So Jesus came later, right? Jesus came and down the cross later, right? So they didn't have Jesus. But why, has it, why must they kill a lamb, Elim? Why must they kill an animal? Because? Because when Adam and Eve sin, then they try to clothe themselves with what? Um, Phoebe. When Adam and Eve sin, they try to clothe themselves with what? Huh? No, they didn't. They used leaves to cover themselves. But God will cover them with an animal skin. When God covered them with an animal skin means an animal died, right? So God did kill an animal, cover them with animal skin. Now why? Why must an animal die? Isaac, do you know why? Why must an animal die? Why must another, anim another one die? Don't know. Okay, Jennifer, why? What's, why? Why must another animal die? To take their place. Very good. To take their place. Alright? Faith. Why must the animal take your place? Well, you don't have to die, but they die instead. They what? They die instead. So they die instead, alright? So, so now you know why the man will put his hand, the man will put his hand on the animal's head. So why do you think the man put the hand on the animal's head now? They are dying, the animal die in your place. Why? What's the meaning? Um, Supporting. Ooh. Why? Um, they put the scent on them. Very good, Chloe. So when the man bring the animal, all right, listen carefully, yeah. So you must understand how you're safe, all right? Maggie, they bring the lamb, all right? Isaac, they bring the lamb. Now, who should die because of sin? Who committed sin? Isaac, we committed sin, right? So we committed sin. Very good. Now, if we commit sin, when God punish you, then who must go to hell? Us, right? Now, but God want to save you, right? So what God did was, then another die in your place, correct? Another die in your place. So when the man brings the animal, he puts his hand on the animal, like Chloe say, it's like the idea is, my sin is upon this animal. Alright, my sin is upon this animal and this animal will die on my behalf, correct? Must die on my behalf. Understand? So, what is Jesus called the... has to do with lamb? It's called the... Lamb of God. So, Jesus is called the Lamb of God, right? The Lamb of God. So, when they did this, let me ask you, um, Maggie, Oh no, Veronica. Veronica, does the lamb really took away our sin? Did the lamb really take away our sin? Did the lamb really was effective to take away our sin? The animal? No, right? Why no? Can animals die on our behalf? Can or not? Who must die on our behalf? Jesus, right? Jesus, the Lamb of God, will die on our behalf. So this, now look here, uh, this represents, understand represents? This represents, this Lamb represents Jesus. So they know that one day Jesus will come. This Lamb will remind them, the Lamb of God will come. Okay? Uh, Phoebe. So, how did your sins get forgiven? Your sins are forgiven because the Lamb of God died on your behalf, correct? Okay, so Phoebe, let me ask you. Can you be a very, very good girl? Because you're a very, very good girl, you can go to heaven. No. Why? Because you still have your sin on you, right? So that sin must be washed away, right? Someone must take that punishment. 
You want to take the punishment for your sin? What's the punishment for sin, Phoebe? Death, and where you end up in? In hell. So that's the punishment. You want that punishment? No. If you don't want that punishment, then only Jesus can take that punishment for you, right? Okay, so now you know how you're saved? Okay, oh, Isaac, how are you saved? Because Jesus died on the cross for who? For us, all right? So being a good person, can that save you? Can that wash away your sins? No. But after you believe in Jesus, Noah, after you believe in Jesus, what should you be? Should you obey? You, you can't obey to go to heaven, but after, after you're saved, you obey because of what? Because we want to obey God. We want to please God. Now, but so now, the Bible tells us, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin, right? Chloe, pay attention, Chloe. Now, without the death, mm, purple blood. Without, mm, confused, all right? Without the blood, without the shedding of blood, means kill and then the blood flow. Without the shedding of blood, sins cannot be forgiven. Is it true? It's true. The Bible tells us that. All right? When Jesus died on the cross, What's that blood? I know you don't like to talk about this. Ask someone else. Uh, Caleb. Enoch. Was that blood? We read in the Bible, Jesus shed his blood. Correct? Jesus shed his blood. So, Jesus will shed his blood for us on our behalf. Now, so I ask you this. Okay, think carefully. Eh? Okay, let me ask you. Right. Can Jesus be... Can Jesus be hung on a tree and die, hanging, die, die by hanging on a tree? No. Okay, let me see. Can Jesus be um, choked to death? Does it help us? Will it help us? No. Why? Chloe, why? There's no blood, right? The Bible tells us he will die. He will shed his blood. All right, so he will die on the cross. He will shed his blood. Okay? So the shedding of blood is important, is it not? Did Jesus did not die by hanging. Jesus did not die by suffocation. Jesus did not die by poisoning, right? Jesus died by shedding his blood. Is the shedding of blood important? The Bible says important. So what can wash away my sin, Jesse? Nothing but, nothing but Jesus' blood, right? So you must remember that, okay? So, now, but then, look at Hebrews. Are you in Hebrews? Hebrews 9.22. Now, so please remember how you're saved. Chloe, now you understand how you're saved? All right? You put your trust in Jesus, the Lamb of God, right? He died in your place. Okay? Now, but Phoebe asks, Phoebe asks, okay? Phoebe asks, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood, there's no remission. So the Bible says, without shedding of blood, there's no remission. But yet Phoebe asks, why does the Bible say almost all things? Almost all things. All right, Jesse is laughing. Faith. Why are you smiling? All right, so why? Why? You're not sure also. But the Bible does say almost all. But I thought we say everything must be. Right? But the Bible says almost all. Hannah, Anna. Oh, you, your hair all covering your face, I cannot recognize you. Anna, you cannot hide. <laughs> Why? Why does the Bible say, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin? But yet it says, but, but what? Almost all things. Caleb do, you, hey, Caleb, do you understand the question? I thought the Bible said, shedding of blood is needed for forgiveness of sin, right? So they want to have their sins forgiven. They must bring the lamb, and then the lamb must be killed, and there's a shedding of blood. All right? But the Bible says there seems to be some exceptional cases. You want to try, Jesse? What's the exception? Why are there exceptions? Not all the cases. You want to try? No. <laughs> Why? Sing Yun, Sing Yun. Why? Sing Yuan. Yes, Sing Yuan. Sing Yuan. Why? You don't understand the question. You're not paying attention or, you, or, or my questions are bad. 
the Bible says, so we already established without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. So for purging of sin, there must be the shedding of blood. But it says almost all things. Seems like there are some cases where there's no shedding of blood. Why? Puzzle. That is Phoebe's question, right? No. Why? Jennifer. No? You want to call your daddy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why you sub <sabo> your daddy? <laughs> I thought you said no. <laughs> Alright, daddy to the rescue. <laughs> um, well, almost all things means not everything can be uh, purged with the blood. So there could be sins that are not Oh, wow. So is it because there are some sins that cannot be forgiven? There are, no. Every sin can be forgiven. So, so every sin can be forgiven. Yes, Chloe wants to try. Why? Is it because the animals don't have spirits? No. The animal is just to represent, that's all. Just to represent. All right? So actually, it's a good question. Can, are there sins that cannot be forgiven? What about this blasphemy against the Holy Spirit? Can it be forgiven? If the person repent. As long as the person stay resisting the Holy Spirit, he can't be forgiven, right? But if one day he say, I don't want to resist the Holy Spirit anymore. I accept that I'm a sinner. The Holy Spirit convinced me I'm a sinner. I want to repent. They can be forgiven, okay? All right. As long as they stay I don't want to believe, I reject the Holy Spirit, they continue to be in a state of blaspheming the Holy Spirit, they cannot be saved. Okay? So there are no such thing as sins that cannot be forgiven. In that sense. Uh. So why? Why? Now look at this. What animal is this? Faith. What animal is that? If you can recognize my drawing. What animal is that? You can see it. Uh. What animal? It's a lamb. Alright? Uh, so I give you a clue. Edward, what do you think? This is a lamb, you know. Bring a lamb. Ooh, big animal. Or cute animal. Right? But God said in some cases, there's no, no need shedding of the blood for forgiveness of sin. Same sin. So someone commit a sin of um, lying, for example. Then, you know, he need, to, he need to ask God for forgiveness. You have to bring a lamb. Okay? He have to bring a lamb. So kill the lamb, the blood flow, then is he remembered Christ died for me, my sins are forgiven. But God says some cases you lie, no need, no need shedding of blood. Why? Cornelius. You always give the right answer. Why? Pressure. <laughs> they what? They they don't use a lamb. They don't use a lamb. Alright? They use another animal. Not that they use another animal. They don't use a lamb. Why would someone not use a lamb? John. Why would someone not use a lamb? Not sure. Why? Colin, you have to try. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus was sinless, not so much that. The lamb is for them. Alright, now let's turn our Bibles. Now, okay, let's turn our Bibles to Leviticus chapter 5. Okay, I don't tell you which verse first. Now, uh, okay, uh, Chloe, Chloe, Chloe. Oh, don't, don't ask Chloe. Uh, Noah, Noah, Noah. Uh, are, are lambs expensive? Yes. Should be expensive, right? A whole lamb, you know? Now, Noah, assuming you, you, you are on your own, right? You, you have no money. So you committed a sin. How? You want to steal a lamb. Steal a lamb! <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, I need forgiveness. How? 
I'm so poor. Chloe has two lamb. <laughs> All right? When Chloe is sleeping, you go steal a lamb. God, please forgive me for lying. <laughs> Cannot. Then now you need to steal another one for stealing. <laughs> God, I stole a lamb, please. And Chloe ran out of lamb for you to steal. How? Say again. Huh? Okay, let's read huh? Leviticus chapter 5. <laughs> Don't steal, huh? God gave a way out. Let's read verse, verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 11 together. But if he be not able to bring two turtle doves or two pigeons, then he that has sinned shall bring his, for his offering the tenth part of an ephah of fine flour for a sin offering. He, should put no, he shall put no oil upon it, neither shall he put any frankincense thereon, for it is a sin offering. Now, this is called a sin offering, right? People commit sin, then they bring the animal, shedding of blood. It's a sin offering, correct? A sin offering, correct? Now, so when you commit sin, you have to bring the lamb for a sin offering. But there are what? So, um, Enoch, what does this verse mean? If you cannot bring two what? You're too young to understand that. Uh, Jennifer, they cannot, if they cannot bring what? Two? Two turtle doves. So now, this man is, is very poor. All right, This man is very poor. Some poor people, they can bring the turtle doves. You know it's turtle doves? A turtle. <laughs> There's wings. <laughs> no, <laughs> all right, not that, all right? What's a turtle dove? All right, sometimes you see the, it's a, it's a kind of pigeon, all right? They call it the turtle dove, all right? So now turtle doves are already very cheap, understand that? Not say very, very cheap, but they are, they are quite cheap. Compared the turtle dove, all right, the turtle dove, I don't know how to draw. The turtle dove, two of them, is it cheaper than a lamb? What do you think? Killer. Definitely much cheaper, right? But God says, now, some people, they are so poor, they can't even bring two turtle doves. Now, pigeons, even more readily available, they still cannot afford pigeons. You know, it's pigeons, right? And you have sin. So how? Enoch, so how? You're very poor, you commit sin, sin offering, bring a lamb. They say, lamb, don't have. Then God said, bring turtle dove. Then turtle dove also, Enoch said, too poor. Two pigeons also cannot afford. Then how? So Enoch must go to hell. Right? Because no sin offering, right? No sin offering means no forgiveness, right? No forgiveness means end up in hell. So they, they cannot afford. So what does God say? Is God a God that say, no, sorry, poor people, no forgiveness? No, right? What did God say? Bring what? Okay, Anna, bring what? A tenth part. Alright, bring a tenth of, of offering of a tenth part of an ephah of flour fine flour for sin offering. No need to put oil, don't put frankincense. So just bring flour. Flour, flour would be affordable by almost everybody, by and large. Alright? So God says no one will be deprived of forgiveness. If you want to repent, that you won't be so poor that you cannot repent. You can, God say, I will accept this gift that you bring. And still it represents Forgiveness. What's wrong with your hand? Okay, sorry. <laughs> yes. What happens if you, if you like, don't have, have flour? What happens if you don't, don't even have flour? Wait, is it flour? Bring flour, you know? Flour? Hmm? Bring flour. Is it flour? Wait, what do Australians say? F L O U R. Huh? Flour, right? Flour, flour right? There was once I was in a shop. There was in a shop. Then this this uh, Angmo boy came in. You know Angmo boy and this Europe, this Caucasian boy came in. So I was paying money. Then this uh, Ate, uh, this elderly man that speaks Hokkien. Uh, then the boy came in and said, uh, "Can I buy some flour?" Then the man say, "No flour. We no sell flour." <laughs> All right. But actually he wanted flour. Then he went back and forth and back and forth. And I said, "Ate." He wants flour. Yes, okay. <laughs> all right? Singapore is flour. But should be pronounced right flour, alright? So not this flour. Huh? 
All right, so they, they, they always can afford. All right? When God says, then God knows they can always afford. All right? They can. Okay? So God says then, you, will still can be, you still can be forgiven. Now, so you go back to the question, almost all things are purged by, purged, uh, by the law. Purged with blood. Now, almost all. There are some cases. There are some cases where they are so poor, but God will still make sure that they can receive forgiveness. Okay, so some people read, why some cases? Uh, is it because some cases, like, yeah, maybe it's a good, good, good guess. Some cases cannot be forgiven. Uh, or some cases, whatever. No, it's simply that God will grant forgiveness to all. No one should be so poor. Okay, so that's the love and goodness of God. Okay? Now, but the main thing I want you to understand, can animals dying save us? No. The animal represents Christ that will come and die on the cross in the future. Caleb, what do you put your faith in? Your faith is in the animals or your faith is in Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ. Okay, in Jesus Christ. Okay, so I hope you understand your salvation now. Did Jesus need to come to die for you, Elim? Did Jesus need to come to die for you, Elim? <laughs> Jesus is God. He don't need to. But He did come to die for you. So, what must that do to your heart, Elim? Say again. Worship, love and obey Him. He didn't need to do it for you. But He came to do it for you. So we worship, love, and obey Him. Very good. Alright, now the next question is this. Now this one is... is asked... some time back, but I try to explain now. I can't find it. Hmm. Um... Maybe I explain the difficult one. Now, this is the adult question, all right? Now, the person asks... Wait, most parents are here. Okay, good. So, I ask your parents now, all right? So, you can, you can all pay attention to your parents. Now, um, now the person asks, I'm trying to understand the covenant... I'm trying to understand. So parents, all pay attention. Huh? Young ones, you can help your, your parents, all right? I'm trying to understand. God made covenant promise with us. And God says, you and your family will be saved. You and your family will be saved. And then he say, as covenantal parents, we claim the covenant and perform our covenantal duties. But in the end, the covenant is not fulfilled. The kid did not get saved. Understand? Okay. So the parents ask this question. Um, now this is a this is a good question, and a lot of people um, they wonder about it. Now, when we say that when we say that God wants to make a covenant with people and then have infant baptism, all right, have infant baptism, and then at the infant baptism, we ask the parents, um, do you do you believe that Jesus is the only Savior, and on and on and on. So now the person asks, how come after we infant baptize our child and claim the covenant, but yet the child grew up and not be saved. And yet the child grew up and not be saved. So why do you think so? Okay. Who's the youngest? Elisha. Okay, Elisha. So, uh, actually you all, you all believe, alright? So sometimes two parents, alright? Two parents, they come and then they bring the baby, the father carry the baby, alright? The father is not pregnant, nah, but he's carrying the baby, alright? The father is carrying the baby, right? Then, remember we do infant baptism, alright? So the pastor, alright? The pastor infant baptized the baby, correct? Infant baptized the baby, like you all, alright? Infant baptized. Now, but, so, 
the parents say we bring our child for infant baptism and we often read this passage you know believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your household shall be saved okay so then the parents say okay la, then this is covenant right so the parent asks this covenant the parent asks so we claim we claim God's covenant we bring for infant baptism and then we also do our part to bring up the child properly okay but, but have you come across cases where the child grew up okay where the child grew up I grew up huh? when the child grew up and then the child say I don't believe in Jesus I don't believe there's a God then the parents say hey how come I thought we claim God's covenant blessings and promise we did our part how come the child is not saved so that's the question understand understand okay so ask parents why you claim God's promises right? but then the child did not get saved why who wants to try who have infant baptized your child everyone have you known in this church of children that grew up and did not get saved we have right very often very often so so God did not keep his promise the child still grew up and did not get saved okay Cornelius is thinking very hard or are you dreaming <laughs> so what are you thinking about lunch no huh? <laughs> okay. so why 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 do you think so Okay, Cornelius say the parents must try their best to bring up the child in the Lord but God is not saying they will definitely be saved. But God says it's to your household, to your house. So you say, all my children should be saved, right? Are you part of the house? Are you part of your parents' household? Yep, right? What about your puppy, your dog? <laughs> Never mind. Okay, <laughs> don't answer that. Now, so, so how? How come? Uh, uh, Howard? So parents always have this, how come not all my child got saved? Alright, maybe, okay, I, I, maybe I brought two. I brought two. Alright, the green one. Alright, the green one grew up and believed in Jesus. But the black one is the black sheep. Don't believe. But both went through infant baptism. Maybe the pastor is the problem. He didn't put enough water on this one. Is it that? Why? So parents, do you ever un wonder about this? Howard? So it goes back to Old Testament time where the male child needed to be circumcised in the heart of the mm -hmm. So I think the same principle applies. Uh, I think it's similar to what the Lord just mentioned is what they believe part of God's right. Okay, so the duty of the parents is to bring the child and desire the child to be part of God's people. Whether the child will believe or not, that's up to God. That's called what? So this is called before the foundation of the world will happen, Jesse. How come you are a believer? Because Jesus Jesus died for you but before the foundation of the world Sing Yuan Sing Yuan Sing Yuan Yuan in that one <laughs> why Yuan no Yun Yun why <laughs> why predestination predestination alright so you say pre all right, predestination or, is, or election, right? Election. Whether the green one or the black one will be safe depends on what? Not how much water is used, right? Depends on election, correct? Depends on election. So, I'm glad you all brought up the Old Testament. Now, let's turn to... Um, turn to... Genesis chapter 17.
Okay, so now here is circumcision. We all know, right? The very famous passage, Genesis chapter 17. Um, now we will read from verse 9 all the way. To 16, 9 to 16. Shall we read from 9 to 16 reading? And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, thou and thy seed after thee in thy generations. This is my covenant, which Okay, so now, here, we, we all know, I don't need to explain, right? Maybe I ask Enoch. In the Old Testament, is circumcision, circumcision, in the New Testament, circumcision is replaced by? Not sure. By the lamb? No, no, no. Okay, uh, and, uh, Anna. Okay, so this is water baptism. Okay, water baptism. In the Old Testament, was circumcision and water baptism replace circumcision of the Old Testament, right? So this is what it is. Now, so we read, right? Here is Abraham. I don't know how to draw Abraham, but Abraham, I think he also wear this kind of thing. All right, so here is Abraham. Maybe he has a beard. All right, so now this is Abraham. When God made the covenant with Abraham, right? When God made the covenant with Abraham, God says, all, oh, everyone in your house, must be circumcised. Everyone, all the male. Correct? All. Correct? And then God said, the promise is to you and your seed. And Abraham's seed is to be what? Like the what of the sea? The what of the sea? The fishes of the sea. Is it? The sand of the sea. Can you count sand from the sea, Isaac? Can you count how much sand? So it's a lot. Many people. Many people is in this covenant. You circumcise them, they're in this covenant. But let me ask you, did, so people that get circumcised in the future generation, so for example, some of the Jews, were all the Jews believers? Ilim, did all the Jews believe? No, right? Many did not believe. Many go and worship other gods and so on, right? But were they circumcised? They were. Are they part of, of, of Abraham's seed? Yes. But were all saved? No. But did they go through the covenant of circumcision? Yes, they became God's people. That's all. Outwardly a people. But they did not believe. Understand? So, when God says this covenant, now let's see another example. Huh? Let's see an example. Who is King? Remember King Hezekiah? No. King Hezekiah was a good or bad king? Cornelius. A killer. Noah. Not sure. Now, okay, let's turn to 2 Kings chapter 21 quickly. 2 Kings chapter 21. Okay, Hezekiah was a good king, all right? Hezekiah, let's read verse 3. Shall we read together? Reading verse 3 together, please. Okay, let's read verse 6. Also, uh, verse, in fact, 4, 5, 6. Let's read. And he built altars in the house of the Lord. Of which the Lord said, In Jerusalem will I put my name. 
And he built altars for all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. And he made his son pass through the fire and observed times and used enchantment and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards. He, he wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Now, who is this describing? This describing verse 1, Manasseh. Okay, Manasseh. All right, so there's this king, this king called Hezekiah. All right, King Hezekiah. All right, Hezekiah. Hezekiah. Now, King Hezekiah was a good king. All right, he tore down all the bad, all the idol altars and all that in, Jude, in Israel. So he was a good king. He got rid of all the idolatry. All right, but here we read his son. His, what's, his, what's the name of his son? Phoebe. Don't know, because we didn't read. My fault. All right, the son after him is called Manasseh. Am I spelled wrongly? One N, one N, two S. All right, one N, two S. Manasseh. All right, Manas, huh? one N, two S. Ah. Manasseh. Now, man, what did Manasseh do? Phoebe, he built altars. Built altars. He visited wizards. And familiar spirit, you know what is wizards? What's wizards? Those things that crawl on the wall with a long tail. Lizards, no? What are wizards? Cornelius. Say again? Witchcraft. witchcraft. They practice witchcraft and that kind of thing. Wizards, right? So God says, wizards are good or bad? Bad, right? Wizards are bad. Should you like Harry Potter? Who likes Harry Potter? Well, also control. <laughs> all right? Why should we not like Harry Potter? Because they promote all the wizards and everything, right? So God, God said they're wicked. So Manasseh did all these things. And he made his son pass through the fire. What does it mean, make his son pass through the fire? Who can tell me? Pass through the fire means he asked his son to make barbecue for him. Pass through the fire. What does it mean? Jesse, what does it mean, pass through the fire? Don't know. Pass through the fire means he sacrificed his son. Use the fire, sacrifice his son to the to the false gods. He burned the son. You want your daddy to be like that? No, right? He worshiped all these false gods and he even burned his son. Right, so is Manasseh a good king? Bad king. Do you think he believed in God, Jehovah? No, he did not. Right? So he would have been circumcised. Okay, so he whose son? Immediate son, right? But was Hezekiah, Manasseh saved? Manasseh was not saved. Okay? So now this verse that say, to you and your son, uh, to you and, and, and your household, do you think, from, even from scriptures, we know that not, the, the, not all of the believer's children are saved, correct? That's a fact we see from the Bible, correct? Not all. But are many of them saved? Yes. Correct? Many of them safe. Now, do you also notice that very often Christian families, by and large, all get saved? Right? Are you daddy, mommy Christians? Are you a Christian? Right? Three. Okay. Who has the most number of children at home? I think Noah, you're all right. Noah? Three, right? Three children. Who has more than three children? Brother and sister? Only you all, I think. Hey, what about you, Anna? Two. Two other. Where are they? Put out your hand, Anna's brothers. And sister. Sorry. <laughs> You're here, alright. Now, well, as you grow up. Now, by and large, you also notice that God does put the elect in the elect's home. Alright, by and large, you see that. But, but from the history, also, you know. So, the household. God said the household. But from history, the actual fact is not everyone gets saved. Okay, not everyone. Understand that? So God did not promise in the covenant that every child of yours will be saved, but God said your household, many in there. Now, so you must preach the gospel to your family. So when your child, you believe in Jesus, have you preached the gospel to your brother? Try. All right, so you try. Invite them for Christmas. Christmas is coming, right? Invite your parents who are not believers. Right, so God does seem to put elect in the family over time. 
Okay, so um, that is, I uh, believe what it means. It's not promised that every single one will be saved. Not that. But you by and large, the majority are saved. Okay, now, but I want to say this, uh, parents, now parents are listening, right? Parents, this is no excuse for you. Oh, yeah. Okay, like election, what? Oh, yeah, this one, so naughty. Get saved, get saved. Uh. Maybe not elect when I act like not a bit elect. Should parents have that attitude? You do not know. All right? Your duty is to bring them up in the ways of the Lord. That is your duty. Your duty is not to guess whether they are elect or not. And sometimes I think, uh, I, I'm, I'm saying this is my thinking. I'm not saying this is scriptural. Uh. My thinking is parents who actually don't care. Do you think God will put many elect in their family? I don't think so. Hmm? So if your parents say, anyway, they're safe, they're safe, I'm not safe, not safe. I'm not sure that God will put many of his elect in your family. Do you want to be a, such a parent? I don't know. Definitely not. Right? So this is not a promise of salvation. Salvation is by election. And God will elect, and God will choose to put his elect in the elect's family. Right? Many of them in the household will be saved. So we see from scriptures, God did not promise every child will be saved in the family, even in King Hezekiah's case and many other king's case, cases. Okay? Right? But parents, please don't make that excuse. Well, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. Actually, I'll ask you further a question. Huh? It's not my fault. So parents like to say that it's not my fault. It's God's fault. Okay, so two parents. Two parents. Let's use this one still. A parent, so have one baby, another baby, all right, and maybe another one standing here. Okay, baptize three, all right, baptize three. Now, uh, okay, maybe with two, uh, uh, con Howard's case, all right? Oh no, Alex's case. Right, two, two girls. So got ponytail. Right, two girls. All right, baptized already. Now, should a parent say, "Ah, yeah, don't know whether which one is safe or which one is elect. Let's leave it to God." Hmm? And then don't bring and do not bring up in God's godly ways. You don't because yeah, anyway, I don't know what. Right? They grow if they're safe, they will be safe, ah. So from now till Jennifer and Veronica grow up, if they're elect, they're elect, they will go to heaven. I don't need to do much. I just enjoy my life. Bring them for holiday. Don't need to bring them to church. No need to teach them the word of God. No need to do family worship. Don't do all these things because if they're elect, they'll be saved. Okay? They're naughty. Don't correct them. Now, if they're elect, they will eventually get saved. Hmm? Hey, you're too better listen, you know? Right? Never mind. I have to do like them. Do you know which one is elect? No, right? So what's the point? Of bringing them up in godly way Because anyway the covenant Well, it depends on election still what? So what's the point of bringing them up in God's ways? Fulfill your duty, number one Fulfill duty, good That's my duty, I do not know But my duty is to do this, right? But how would you know they are not elect? Who's taller? I don't know. One is taller. Hmm? One is taller. Okay. How do you know they are not elect? Now, if you don't bring them up in godly ways, from here to here, and then they commit all sorts of sins. You want to commit all sorts of sins or not? When they commit all sorts of sins, what will happen? They will have, over time, they will develop all sorts of sinful habits. By the time they grow up, and if they are elect, they will get saved when they grow up, for example. Maybe go on to save them later. By the time they get saved, now let me ask you, do you think they will have so many sinful habits, so many sinful habits, that they will struggle as a Christian? When you're young, say, hey, Jennifer, don't play computer games, don't listen to rock music, don't have unbeliever as a boyfriend, all those things. We keep teaching, all right? Versus, maybe elect, not elect, let me check the hair behind, got elect or not. 
don't know. The hair so long, cannot see. You do not know, right? So, but you keep bringing up in the way of the Lord. Now, if Jennifer kept, was kept away from all these things, Jennifer, I'm not saying you're not safe now, huh? but assuming Jennifer is not safe now, and Jennifer got safe when she grew up, do you think her life as a Christian will be much better? Much better, right? That's why God said, bring them up in the way of the Lord. You do not know whether they're elect or not, but in my household, in your household, you will have elects. And therefore, when you bring them up rightly, it's for their better when they grow. At the point they get saved, it's a lot better for them also. And along the way, they don't commit so many problems and their life is ruined. Correct? That is why God says, you just do your part. Election is up to me, but I will put elect in your family. Know that. You do not know who. You cannot say, anyway, elect going to heaven. You're supposed to prepare them for that. Understand? Okay? Do you understand? <laughs> I'm glad you all pay attention. But if you don't understand, ask your daddy and mommy. They say they understand. <laughs> Alright? But the main thing, hey, okay, now children. So, from young to you grow up, you must listen to who? Listen to who? Say again? Listen to your parents. Alright? Listen to your parents. They are trying to help you to be godly children. Will you listen to your parents, Veronica? Why? Because? To be godly, they're trying to help you to be godly. Okay, so listen to them. But the important thing, God says He wants to save you. You want to believe in Jesus? Who don't want to believe in Jesus? Who wants to believe in Jesus? You just look at you look at the chair and you put your hand. You really want to believe in Jesus? Yes. Alright, so we from young, let's believe in Jesus from young. Okay? Alright, any other questions? No, I hope you understand this. Alright, so that's all the time we have. Next week, I will answer um, another question. Now, please submit your questions, alright? Okay? Let us pray. What do we have here? Top five reasons why church dropouts, uh, what church dropouts say, why they stop attending church. Now, please remember 66% of, well, I take the American view, um, they are the most readily available results. They stop attending church at least a year after turning 18. So from